All right, good morning, uh, or greetings whenever you're watching this. Uh, this is Robert Forsh, and I'm live right now. Uh, there, um, looks like I just came up. I'm going to go ahead and turn the stream on. All right, good morning, uh, or greetings whenever you're watching this. Uh, this is Robert Forsh, and I'm live right now. Uh, there, um, looks like I just came up. I'm going to... Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, just mute that. Oh, listen to this. So this this gets a little weird. So I'm gonna I am going to go ahead and mute that out and uh, close it up for now. I'm going to take us to the. Uh, to the beach the sun is approaching I'm gonna show you the rig that I've got here uh, the lighting isn't so good with that but I did want to show some different dynamics with uh, with lighting and how that matters this is a massive uh, light that works good to show different things this right here is the um, the nature uh, lounge V they've got a lot of beautiful video time-lapse I've got uh, Time Storm as well that I put up there. And I, I wanted to show you a couple of things. This right here is the, the setup. You might be able to see it a little bit better. It's the P1000 with the, um, uh, the smartphone on top with an MV88 mic. And then the, the windscreen on it. I'll go ahead and mute this out. Oh, there we go. Uh, yesterday I showed you the, um, the bathtub with the seashell floating in it. Uh, it's not moving. Um, what I have here too, just to show you, like the um, right there, there's a, a little bit of uh, dirt that uh, came out of the plants when I uh, blew them dry with, uh, with my uh, dryer there. I use a, a combination of uh, baking soda and coconut oil. I wanted to uh, illustrate something here uh, with the light. It's uh, kind of bouncing off of there. Just watch the uh, shell here. And then we can see the, the ripples. The, uh, the differences in density and mass cause things to float and fall. That's just the reality of that. Uh, this is uh, thin enough you can actually see light through it. It's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so the, the water will get really still and uh, that is highly purified uh, carbon filtered water. I put it in uh, polycarbonate and part of the in, inside environment would be uh, a lot of plants. Uh, it's an inexpensive way of generating a lot of oxygen in the house. And like one of the reasons for the mirrors, uh, okay, so that's the TV, and that's the mirror view from, from the bathtub. And then also like right there, uh, that's the other room right there. You, can you see it? And And that's all part of the the dynamic of the the lighting uh, right over in this direction here facing out that way is where the ocean is I'm going to take us outside show you a little bit of the uh, the room here I've got it uh, being recorded with the P1000 as well for a little bit of a sound check uh, the mirrors are a big deal they're an indicator of the world that we live in the plain mirror uh, just like the wet sand at the ocean or the water that you'll see on the on the ride in should be very interesting. Uh, this right here is a, a slate uh, table. I put a, a new cover on it. Uh, it's burgundy like the the microfiber uh, cloth and this is a select comfort on top of that. Pretty cool got a lava lamp uh, last night and you know the thing of it is like the um, where we live uh, spend a lot of time inside makes a, a difference there's a 
a lot of oxygen in here because of the uh, the plants. And I'm going to take us outside and I want to show you a few things there. And I'm going to keep this live all the way to the beach. Oh, I almost forgot. That's Dean Martin. And that's Smeagol. Hey Smeagol, it's showtime baby. Yeah, they are adorable. I, I bathe them in the highly purified carbon filtered water too. Come on Smeagol, time to get up and be cute. Uh oh. <laughs> it's okay baby. He's not a morning cat. Dean is. So I'm going to take us over to an area where I heat up the, uh, the water. I refill those. reason it's a big deal is um, that clean, pure water makes a big difference in how we uh, cleanse our bodies in that. The uh, temperature drives the hydrologic cycle, the water cycle of the world. Uh, do you know how much a gallon of water weighs? Well, that depends on the temperature of the water because the density and volume changes with temperature. I turned it from low to high, and it's starting to uh, boil. This is the technology. It's the reverse osmosis carbon filtration. Yep, Dean's here to add a little humor to the whole thing. And what I'll do here, see this, um, when this overfills, it'll just go right into the washing machine. So what I'll, what I'll do with that is just put it um, in a jug that has more room in it. And it'll, it'll keep filming, filling I should say. So I've got the uh, Bible.com there. That's still a valuable app and over a over a thousand languages of God's Word for free okay so with just a couple of minutes or moments actually it went from low to boiling and when I cut it down uh, before I leave if I were to turn it all the way off, um, it would stay warm most of the day. And we can, this is a five and a half gallon stock pot. It's like $55 or so from Walmart. The, uh, what will you do when the truth is right in front of you? Um, the way that this makes coffee is it runs it the highly purified water through the beans and then it puts it in a thermal carafe but uh, the thermos is actually uh, better more effective what I uh, what I do have as well is a um, a whole house uh, system it's dual carbon filtered and that's just how that works you see the the tank on this is like less than a couple of gallons but what I'll end up doing is keep it filling. Uh, those are five gallon jugs and I'll just keep uh, filling them through the day. Okay, so I'm gonna take us on out. I think I, oh, I did wanna grab one other thing. So it, they don't want me to have my um, YouTube logo on the garage anymore, but that's okay. I can work with that. Right, Dean? So we've got fog right now, and the um, the P1000 doesn't pick up the uh, light as good as the iPhone does. And then we can see the 
that that's part of what I wanted to show you is the um, the light beam and what we can see with that how that looks a little bit different so when I had the truth mobile and we had um, oh unknown guests in the neighborhood I've got the uh, the moon roof sunroof and I've got this shooting out the top with a, a light beam that'll shoot like really far it's like hey we know you're in here okay so what I want to show you right down in front of the view there right where I'm shooting the beam is um, a reflection on the road and it shows up when I move the camera that much that's how precision the uh, the flat water is in the in the world undisturbed water is flat and level it's a puddle in the middle of the road right there see it it's coming from the light that's in the middle of the view So the ocean is right over in that direction. And we can see the wind blowing very, very subtly. I can hear the uh, school bus coming behind me. So you think the, uh, let's give the, put a little light on the subject for the uh, students. the young impressionable minds that will be um, getting some type of indoctrination today right that's the way it works so we've got the truth of the non-moving earth that's part of the reality of why I show this so even though there's just a little bit of movement there it's because of the the gentle breeze that we can see right there less than uh, a mile per hour or so. A little bit different lighting with the uh, truth cycle. The cool thing with that is uh, parking is really easy to get at when I um, am driving around in the summertime especially. So I'm going to show you this from a, a different vantage point. Let's uh, cut that off. Once again, the, uh, I'm going to bring the globe out. Uh, the, I'm exposing the global deception, and the reason why it matters is, of course, because the, um, the truth matters. There's up and down, not upside down in relationship to other people. You know, there's no water doesn't stick to a ball. And I'm going to show you that. Is it a wind chime? Well, yeah, it's a wind chime and a water chime, right? So the, the water will just go down. Okay, so you can see it from this vantage point. It's kind of cool. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put the camera in the car and uh, cut the broadcast or the uh, recording with the P1000 now and uh, go ahead and set this up in here. Try and do it without um, losing the broadcast here. Sometimes that's a bit of a challenge. Okay. I've pulled the uh, the mic off. There we go. So I'm recording now, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just show you this uh, with the. I'll get her fired up. All right.
All right, so um, we've got no um, no water sticking to the ball, right? That's part of the wall. Yeah, the eyebrows are still there. <laughs> yeah, I get people make fun of my eyebrows. Good, good. Get people fa making fun of the, the truth that um, water seeks its level, covers the face of the earth, doesn't stick to a ball. Oh, well. So I'm going to take us for a ride. We've got um, a temperature differential going on out there, uh, condensing of the moisture in the atmosphere. Fog. And uh, it's quite a bit colder in, in the Midwest expecting quite a bit of snow in uh, in this day in Wisconsin where we used to live. Our adult sons live there right now. And I, I wanted to um, have a continuous um, recording all the way in. Uh, and I wanted to illustrate some things here. Where I drove from just now on the driveway is um, eight and a half feet above sea level. Just to put that in perspective, there's a big ocean out there that could very easily uh, flood this area. Now we had um, Hurricane Florence this September, past September, and uh, there was a lot of flooding. We had uh, flooding come up in our neighborhood just from the Waccamaw River, which exits into the waterway and out into the ocean. Uh, yesterday morning, because of the wind direction, I could smell uh, motor oil and that in the in the air. Um, what happened was we had a lot of flooding in the in the wetlands all around us, and I could smell automatic transmission fluid, motor oil. I I would worked on cars and motorcycles most of my life, and I can smell that uh, when the wind comes from the um, from the south. Uh, I can smell the, uh, and it's there for a while, I can smell the uh, uh, International Paper Corporation. Reminds me of when I was a child growing up in the Fox Valley, the Paper Valley, also known as, uh, and they make cardboard down there at the International uh, Paper Company Corporation. I don't know if that's still the, the name of it, but um, yeah, so right now, there's uh, less than three miles an hour of wind, and it's a prime condition for the fog to produce. The, the water is relatively warm um, in the low 50s, and uh, so is the temperature right now. It's 56 outside. A lot colder in other parts of the country. I'm not gonna give you a breakdown of all of it. Um, but what we can see is a converging of, of uh, air masses. It's kind of like when you open up the freezer and the cold rolls out and we can see the condensing of the moisture in the air. That whole temperature differential uh, drives the water cycle of the world, the evaporation, condensation, and of course the precipitation in all its forms, rain, snow, sleet, fog, hail and uh, in that so part of what happens uh, more recently like yesterday it was uh, rainy and kind of kind of uh, wet outside I just decided not to do much live in the morning um, I did a little bit later on in the day I liked a bunch of uh, videos that were recorded from all over the world beautiful 4k video and invited my friends to like uh, time storm uh, films and uh, lounge five uh, video and photography and one of the reasons for that is it's beautiful to see the cinematography from around the world the beauty and majesty of creation and there's talented uh, video producing companies and they're using uh, millions of dollars of equipment to uh, put that that together. It takes a big budget to put a, a film crew, a recording crew in the mountains to do a time lapse of, of waterfalls and uh, 
exotic locations all over the world. So some of these uh, production companies market their content to television marketing, um, television companies, producers of uh, that technology as well. We're coming up on the speed zone of the hospital. He's actually going at least five over, warranting uh, a ticket if you were to get caught for that. Um, there's typically a speed trap here, uh, more days than not. So I just, uh, and he's a friend and a neighbor. I'm not upset that he's speeding. Uh, that right there is the expansion of the uh, Seacoast uh, Medical, uh, multi-million dollar uh, to the left is a development with over 1,200 homes and uh, assisted living and uh, skilled nursing facilities as well. It's a, it's a good fit for this area. A lot of people retire here, so uh, they want their uh, convalescing or um, parents that have long-term care to be right in their neighborhood. It's easy to do that. So we're gonna be going over the Intracoastal Waterway in less than a minute. And that is also affected by the tidal activity. High tide today is at 7.02 and the, um, the sunrise is scheduled for 7.01. Uh, right now, at this in this season, We've got an increasing, or a, a, the uh, the sun is appearing uh, one minute earlier. It has been for for days now. Each day, one minute earlier, the uh, the sun and the moon and stars move above a stationary Earth. Um, the wind moves above above the stationary Earth as well. So the visibility is less than a quarter of a mile easily right now. It's a lot of moisture in the air. This is one of the reasons why we can't see Europe from North America. There's too much moisture. With um, what, what I did with the time-lapse uh, videography that I featured, and I'll, I'll tell you why, because we can see that clouds aren't necessarily blowing in, although there are videos, time-lapse, that shows complete storm system movements. And then there's also ob obviously uh, clouds being created right in front of our eyes. That's part of the, the deal. Because of the temperature differentials and, and the converging, the colliding of those weather masses or those uh, air systems, we can see uh, the clouds being created right in front of us. This is a very low level. I can tell uh, that it's getting pretty bright. So we're actually, we'll see how it unfolds. But it, it looks like we may have just a very uh, beautiful sunrise, even though it's really foggy right here. I've seen uh, sunny fog as well. Uh, right now, I believe Seal Beach, and that's in California, uh, about 2,600 uh, miles away or so. Um, they're in the 50s as well. I've driven and flown from coast to coast. For people that think I need to broaden my horizons and experience a little bit more of reality, I'm, I'm good. I get plenty of reality. Um, and I'm showing it to uh, a population of this world, some that are interested in knowing about it and some that are not. And so I'll, I'll reach on through the digital stream of information and insert myself in that with um, worldwide digital social media and, uh, and modern technology to basically expose the reality that, yes, NASA lies. Um, and then I put uh, truth seeker. Are, are you a truth seeker? Do you want to know the truth, or are you looking to validate the chosen perspective you want to believe? It's a very simple question, but it's not a very simple answer. A lot of people will give lip service to, yeah, of course I love the truth. I, I believe the truth. That's what I prefer to believe. And what I would simply say is, um, 
uh, why do you believe what you believe? Do you believe it because it's true or it's just the perspective you want to hold to? Well, one of my friends yesterday said you're a grown man um, that believes the earth is flat and very condescending. I, I didn't unfriend him. I might have three years ago. Not now. I feel sorry for people that um, ag actually believe we live on a globe. There's something wrong with them um, in that they're, they're deceived. I know they're deceived. It's not that I believe they're deceived. I know it. And uh, so right now we're on our way to the, um, the point in Cherry Grove. And normally we would be able to see the water tower that's on the left. Not so much right now. Can you see it? I can't. Um, I'm going to pull on in there and I want to show it to you. I see it now. They're, um, they're repainting it and uh, they're going to be installing a lot of... Um, a lot of technology on top. There it is. And I featured these gentlemen, whoop, I pulled a little too early, but that's okay. And I, I won't be able to get through there, so I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna back on around. You'll be able to see it from here though. And what they're going to do is add uh, quite a bit of additional uh, technology that should actually help my uh, broadcasts. I know that when I get over to the, um, the Prince Resort area where the Cherry Grove Fishing Pier is, there's um, quite a bit of um, interference and a, a lack of real solid reception. So what I want to do here is just show you what they've got working on this. I see a lot of sand there. Um, that would be evidence of a lot of sandblasting that's going to happen. Scaffolding Solutions is doing the, um, the placement of the scaffolding. And you're looking at a massive, massive air compressor right there. Ingersoll Rand, it's a massive one. And then those are the uh, air tanks to give um, a little bit of ability to, um, to build that up, pressure up. And uh, then of course the hoses for all of that. Now what'll go along with that is um, not only will they have the, um, uh, the sand blasting, there'll be the, the painting that occurs as well. Now this right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna open this up and and show you. Okay, that's a good shot right there. That's the temporary tower on the left, and then the tower on the right is um, all uh, just simply being um, uh, protected by the plastic and and all of that. I'm sure they've got a recovery system. I see a, uh, a massive, um, a massive a bunch of air handling that's going on there with that. And, uh, you know, I, they'll, they'll go to my channel. They've waved and um, I probably get subs uh, from people like that throughout the, throughout the day. Like yesterday when I was at the Goodwill, uh, the young man named Ray said, are you a YouTuber? I said, yeah, I sure am. Um, down below here, there's, um, I'm not going to need to show you, they've just got an opening down below for airflow. So the, the way that it's designed is it's like a chimney, and uh, you can see it maybe right there. I'll uh, pan on over. Now let's see. Well, it's, it's raised up a couple of feet. I'm just going to cruise on down. It's raised up a couple of feet so that the, uh, the sand will fall down, the, uh, the air will come under, and, and then the, the operators will have filtration systems on them and all that. It's pretty nasty. I used to uh, work refinishing metal. I've worked a sandblaster before. It's one of the dirtiest jobs you can do in this, in this world. Uh, dirty jobs with uh, Mike, I believe he's, 
he's on like one of the Discovery channels and, and he shows some of that. So we're seven minutes away from sunrise right now. Can you tell? And uh, that's the coastal preserve to the left. And uh, we can see that the tide is, is way down low. I'm gonna actually um, show you. I've got this on other videos and what I wanna do is take it on out, take you on out now. And I'll do that with my P1000 rig. I'm just gonna put you on there. So what I'll do is just attach it to the top here. So what I'll do then too is um, go ahead and record with the P1000 as well. Listen to the wildlife, isn't it amazing? So the water is going to come in over four feet uh, clearly to cover up all of, um, all of that. And the uh, water there is demonstrably flat once again. That's the, the physics and properties of water is it seeks level. It's just what it does. So undisturbed water is flat and level, covers the face of the earth, doesn't stick to a spinning ball. I know I say that a lot, it doesn't change. That reality does not change. The reason the water is coming out down there now is because it's higher over here. There's, um, f there are four culverts that equalize this area. And if I try walking down on those pebbles, I'll just go falling into the water. So I've got to go over here, and that's one of the reasons why I've got a, uh, like, a, it's a water cross shoe from Nike. Or Speedo, I'm sorry. So right there we can see the flow, and it'll just do that. It rises and falls. And then the ocean is uh, just on the other side of the, the front of that building, uh, a couple hundred yards. So I've got uh, video when this is a bit higher and the water is coming this way, there's whirlpools uh, spinning opposite of one another, debunking the toilet water rotation of the earth thing. The earth doesn't rotate, it does not move. Not a little bit, not at all, just so you know. That's what God's word says, that's what I observe. Um, you're entitled to believe whatever you want. Okay, so look straight in the view. Some of the water is rotating that way. Some of it is rotating this way. Because of the shape of it. And it's coming back around here. Fluid dynamics, hydrodynamics. Right in the middle of the view. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot in 
in that with the uh, P1000 you can see it later and I'll zoom in a lot it's uh, it's real still there not perfectly still there's um, a little bit of rippling that's going on on some of this I'll just um, record with the uh, P1000 and I'm not going to comment on everything I do with it you can know that there will be some uh, video uh, merged with this that's going to be zoomed in considerably so those are clam beds um, people will come on out and uh, they'll go fishing crabbing in this area over here some people have said I've got a flasher out because my lights are flashing faster well the truth of the matter is I've got a low draw light emitting diode that's extremely bright and they take less energy so my uh, flashers flash faster <laughs> there you go So I could say that, yeah, all my flashers work, but I can show you they all work, too. That's the other option with that. So now that I'm not riding dirty with drugs and alcohol, I'm able to do things that I could never do before. You know, I, I drive um, a licensed, insured vehicle. I'm a careful driver obeying all the all the laws yeah I'm not texting I'm doing a live broadcast yeah that's cool I'm good with that and what I'll show you is a low tide um, here at the pier area and the reason for that is I can show you a known distance of 985 feet the pier is and I'll, I'll drive right on out there and show you out at the uh, point it it won't be that spectacular because it's gonna just blend all in it's just gonna be gray and there's not a structure out there to show you distance like there is here and there's a very slight chance of rain today uh, here's my friend Jeff in the in the truck there. He's probably watching the live broadcast right now. If you can hear me, Jeff, wave. I can see you waving. So now I'll be able to rig this up with my uh, tripod. It'll it'll work a bit better. just set that there for a moment and grab my uh, stuff So right here at the, the Prince, we've got the pier that we can't see the end of, which is, like I said, 985 feet long. And it's low tide, and from this vantage point today, the sun is appearing right there. Right. 
It is, we just can't see it. That's all. So I'm not disappointed that I can't show you a beautiful sunrise. I'm actually uh, glad um, that I can show you just the reality of a, of a foggy morning out here. It's just the way it is. So today there was, I believe, a 3.8 foot tide. And uh, some of the videos that I have, uh, the extended uh, versions, up to almost 12 hours YouTube uh, broadcast there's uh, close to a seven foot tide in this area now it's a little bit easier to see the end of the pier just that little bit of difference but it's not just the difference in distance it's also air current moving around So once we reach low tide, uh, then the tide just starts coming back in. It's a diurnal tide here, high and a low tide twice a day, between roughly four and seven feet. Now up in uh, Canada, the Bay of Fundy has between a 35 and 50 foot tidal swing. It's a lot of water. So there is mystery with the sun, moon, and stars. They, they are a celestial timepiece that moves above the stationary Earth. The tidal activity, as we were told in the, in the uh, book of Genesis, beginnings in the Bible, that there was uh, the floodgates of heaven opened up, <clears throat> the fountains of the deep, and it started to rain. So uh, is there still water circulation in the Earth? Well, we've got aquifers, we know that. There's a lot of salinity or salt in the aquifers close to the ocean. The uh, baking soda I use for my personal hygiene uh, is salty. And uh, it's uh, a powerful cleaner. It's an oxidizer. The salt mist will uh, rust things very quickly. That's why it's important to give them a fresh water rinse. You know, if I bring a bicycle or a chair to the beach, I rinse it off when I get home or it'll just rust. It'll fall apart with rust. And then, so the the um, the steel that's around here, railings and that, a lot of time are a high-grade steel with nickel in them, like stainless, like those uh, pans and pots that I showed earlier today. They won't rust. The bulldozers I featured out here have a high nickel content as well, stainless. That's why they don't rust much. This is the high tide line of a different tidal activity. We can see because all this uh, stuff floated up here. Good morning, Jeff. So the uh, the water tower is right over there. On different broadcasts, we could see it, but not today. No way. It's not going to happen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my, I'm gonna pull my mic off the uh, the sure mic it just doesn't fit into the holder real good if it's on there uh, 
especially when it's foggy like this, I would rather um, have the, um, the camera affixed really solid where I don't have to handle it. I don't have to um, hold it. I can pay attention to the drive a little bit better. I, I certainly don't want anybody to get hurt because I'm doing a broadcast. So, so I'm, I'm very big on uh, safety. Um, now let's see. I think if I want to, I don't need you to see my eyebrows. <laughs> I'll just flip this around and, and let you see what, uh, what it looks like from the, for the drive here. A big gust of wind and, uh, very likely a lot of this will just go away. That's what it'll do. Uh, because of the travel through the uh, area, through this parking lot right here, it gets rough. There's divots. You'll see the movement of it, the puddles there. Uh, the Right in the middle of the view, once again, is the, um, the drain for the parking lot. The uh, low spots in parking lots get the drain. That's just the way it is. I'm not even gonna take us out to the point. There's really not much to look at there. With the, um, with the fog, we have a lot of diffused lighting. And yet we'll still have um, uh, the pretty reflections um, all around. Now, how elaborate is the system? That school bus right there is taking impressionable young minds to an indoctrination center where they're going to be given um, a false reality. I'm going to try and unlock this. Okay. And I, w I want to elaborate on this a little bit, is that um, the, the system of control is so elaborate that um, there's a lot of disenfranchised family members, husbands, wives arguing. Joni and I did it when we were raising our, our three adult sons now. We did it when they were much younger and relegated a lot of their time together to um, spending in front of video games. Uh, they were getting indoctrinated by the military industrial complex in a, a worldwide deception we didn't even realize existed the way that it does. How about that? So we were part of that whole problem as well. Uh, this right here is the Sea Mountain Highway um, going to the right. And I'm gonna take us to the um, the public parking area here. It's been too dry. Um, the sand is pretty soft. I would sink right in, so I'm not going to drive up there. But then, once again, we've got the uh, the toilets right there. Uh, there aren't uh, porta potties upside down in relationship to other porta potties, toilets, people, and stuff. Wind chimes don't hang upside down. Fountains don't flow upside down in relationship to other fountains. That is all a lie. Everybody believes that there's upside down in relationship to other people and stuff. I know they're deceived. There was a gentleman yesterday that said, explain lunar eclipses. I said, you first. And if he throws out NASA and their explanation, I know NASA lies. They're not a reliable source of that information. Uh, there's other celestial bodies whirling around that we don't know exactly um, what, what they are. There's wandering stars. The Bible uh, talks about them. They've left their primary uh, estate. Uh, and, and there's also uh, fallen angels that are compared to stars in the book of Revelation. A third of the stars were cast out of heaven by, along with the serpent, with Lucifer. So, Santa lies? Does Santa directly lie? Is Santa just lying? <laughs> it's a clever deception to cause 
um, all kinds of people, friends, family, relatives, uh, NORAD, weather people, NASA, lying about seeing Santa Claus uh, flying through the cosmos with his reindeer going to deliver presents to you if you've been a good little boy or girl. And he's like an antichrist. He's a, a God replacement. If you want to know where that really goes, he's um, you better be good uh, because he knows what you're doing behind closed doors, right? No, no, that's a lie. So they're lying, I ain't buying. NASA lies, Santa lies, and Satan lies. He's the, he's the father of lies. I'm unapologetically biblical, folks. If you, if you like that kind of thing, you might like my channel and what I talk about. Now, I do have videos where I don't talk at all. Imagine that. I put my phone number on this one. You can call anytime. I can't take a call now because I've deactivated my uh, my uh, calls. It's uh, do not disturb. I want to show you something here. I've talked about it when they were building this place. Uh, Bolano's uh, Travel Mart, Travel Plaza. One of the best, highest tech, beautiful locations like this I've ever seen. Okay, now there's a, a high power generator right over here. It's called the Olympian. The Olympian. I don't know how many kilowatt it is, but by the looks of the size of it, I would say it's upwards of 50, uh, 50,000, 50, 50K. It might be 150K, I don't know. Um, the Bolanos uh, provide a, a lot of services here at the beach. This is an ice company as well, Frank's Ice. That's the that's the business. I'll show you. He's got a a penguin sitting in a chair here. And it's interesting. I I did a video yesterday. It should be coming up soon now, uh, showing penguins in a in a climate that looked like um, it was warm. Uh, there was no. No ice on the mountains, no snow on the mountaintops. So what kind of a climate is that? Um, there was a lot of water and no snow and, and uh, penguins. Well, I believe it might have been Chile or Argentina. <clears throat> That's where some of the 4K video is shot. So not only do we have the, um, the need to pump fuel out of underground tanks, there, there needs to be electronic commerce that takes place. That's one of the other big deals because um, that pump needs to uh, recognize the whole digital transaction. That's just the way it works. So this is a very clean, nice area. We're really policed up, I like that. I'm not anti-police, I'm not anti-government, I'm anti-corruption, how about that? Unfortunately, we've got a lot of corruption. There's a lot of well-meaning people that are involved in a very uh, authoritarian police state and they're unaware of it. They're unaware of uh, how wicked the system is because it hasn't really shown itself for what it is uh, to the masses. A lot of them are just deceived with how that works. The uh, sanitation specialist that normally picks up our, our trash uh, didn't come yet today. Now that vehicle, when I say a sanitation specialist, that gentleman has a, a CDL. He's operating a piece of equipment that's probably more than a quarter of a million dollars, runs on natural gas, and is mostly automated. And the technology exists right now to fully automate that they, with artificial intelligence. There's already um, the technology to land a fighter aircraft, a drone, on an aircraft car carrier. Arguably one of the most difficult aeronautical maneuvers. Uh, last night, Joni, my wife, was watching First Man. Uh, more propaganda about the fake space program. Oh well, I'm not upset. She believes we live on a globe. I know she's deceived. I share that with you because, you know, you might think, well, you know, I get people that say, Robert, what can I, what can I tell a family member? 
to, to help them realize we don't live on a globe. Hey, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'll talk to the masses. I may be talking to somebody's family member right now with a, a, a curiosity, wondering what, what this is. Why, why would I do this? Why would I get up, you know, before three o'clock in the morning to do this? Uh, because I care, because it matters. You know, my uh, personal hygiene where I'm uh, taking that long soak in the, in the tub, it's, a, it's an exchange of liquid. We've got a lymphatic system, a circulatory system. There's water flowing through the skin. When I work that all and all over my body, it's replacing uh, uh, liquid the, that's in the blood, the, the water that's in the blood and, and in the, the system that the kidneys, bladder, and liver will all need to work on. Well, if it comes directly out of the skin and, and then the purified water takes its place, a highly purified carbon filtered water that the, the body just absolutely loves, like the plants that are luscious and green in the, in the area where I live, uh, that's all a good thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take us on into the, um, to the neighborhood here that they, they've just developed. It's been going on for uh, probably a year. It was a golf course. Uh, we've got a lot of golf courses. Uh, this was bought out by um, a corporation that now calls this Bridgewater. I'll show it to you. It'll be a habitat for a, a lot of people moving from uh, colder climates. I'll tell you, when, um, when you get tired of the... See, it's one thing, uh, the cold is one thing, but on the rugged terrain like I was walking on, when we get sleet and freezing rain, it will, it will put a glaze of ice over uh, areas that have a lot of shape to them. Uh, like hills and and I remember four o'clock or so in the morning I was laying on my back because I I fell down so hard and so fast on uh, on the ground where we used to live in Wisconsin uh, we lived on a farm and my car was parked a good bit away under an overhang I had to walk over a lot of rough terrain well, it wasn't real rough, it just wasn't flat. Well, if you try walking on, on flat ice, like a frozen lake, no big deal. Um, try walking on terrain that's glazed, it's a, it's a different deal. Okay, some of the obvious reality, we can see the light shooting on the blacktop. We've got the Elvis uh, Porta unit playing it. Thank you very much. There it is, right there. Elvis the pelvis. Let's see if I can zoom in. There it is. Do you feel yourself spinning, wobbling, or gyrating? Gyrating is the uh, is this kind of humorous thing. I, I believe that helped my comments to go viral somewhat. I'm at over 25 million views on on the internet now. Will will people get unplugged from the deception because? I, I said, do you feel yourself spinning, wobbling, or gyrating? Well, I don't know. Some will. Uh, so look at how nice this is. We've got a Bridgewater Welcome Center. And then uh, this right over here is a design gallery. I mean, they really know how to do this nice. It's beautiful. Look at the level of homes that are that are going in here. They all have, uh, of course, uh, climate control going in. When uh, when they're being worked on, they have the porta units out front. Um, the workers typically aren't going to use the um, the restroom facilities that go in there. It's just kind of a just the way we do it around here and, and in quite a few other areas as well. And when there's a large uh, facility, uh, there will be like 20 porta units because they'll take a break and a whole bunch of people need to use them at once. 
It's just how it works. There will be, there's irrigation systems in all of this. Uh, it's nice that they've left some uh, beautiful, mature uh, trees here. Look at how pretty that is. And then there's uh, fountains, uh, water retention ponds, and, and that's all a very important part of the design uh, because when, when we get massive amounts of rain, we can get, uh, like Hurricane Harvey uh, brought in over five feet of rain. Five feet of rain. A lot of people were drowned out. They're dead, they're gone. Uh, because of that. Uh, Hurricane Florence that came in and flooded out a lot of people around here, um, we had like over three feet of rain in locations. We'll have a lot of skilled craftsmen that these guys are. Uh, there's concrete equipment right there. And uh, they're, they're on the live broadcast they'll probably go to my channel. A lot of people do. And I'm not hollering at them, telling them we, live, we don't live on a globe and we didn't go to the moon. I don't need to. I can just drive around. I'd love to live here. I, I love where we live now. Uh, so there's, uh, there's the concrete slab. It's still, uh, it's still fresh. <laughs> And, and I can see the, the plumbing sticking out of it. That's when you put the plumbing in. You put the plumbing in before the concrete sets up. There's um, stages of life. People have worked really hard, and then they, they've lived in other areas. Then they cash in their chips, and, and you can buy a lot of really nice accommodations and, and a lifestyle in this area. That's part of the deal. That's part of how it works. Uh, then they transition from the independent living to assisted living to skilled nursing and then to um, a mortuary. That's just the way it is. Okay, so right in the view here is a good view of a pond, a beautiful, um, uh, what is he, a, a woodpecker right there. And then there's the uh, fountain. Now, there's a lot of... Um, a lot of room for water to fill that up, that pond up. That's a good thing. There needs to be because we get a lot of rain here. Um, in my drive yesterday and the live broadcast, I mentioned we can get inches of rain in minutes. I don't mean like uh, three inches of rain in 60 minutes. I mean three inches of rain in five minutes. It's like so, so much rain that you just have to pull over. See the beautiful reflection of the white bird there? Some kind of a crane, I think. One of the commenters that I had on one of my videos says I lost all credibility because I didn't know what kind of a bird one of the birds was. Oh, wow. Well. Those are Canadian geese right there. <laughs> some, some Canadians come and stay. They're not, they're not going back. Why would they? It's really nice here. So in the, in the view here, uh, this is a uh, condominiums right there. And then a lot of these are single family homes. Single floor, attached garage, uh, two story, beautiful. Uh, probably close to 3,000 square feet, they look like. We've got the water going up, the water coming down. That's what it does. <laughs> That's how it works. I wanted to, the quickest way to zoom out is to flip it around. See the mirror that that is? So it demonstrates the physics and the properties of water, whether it's a puddle on the road or a puddle that covers the face of the earth. 
that's just what it does. You can hashtag YouTube Truth. That's one of the that's one of the dynamics uh, to be able to find my channel or tell other people to. And I, I hashtag a lot of my titles because I put this in comments of other people's videos. Like when NASA is doing their fake uh, programming, their false reality, I'll just drop in on a post and say NASA lies. Sometimes I'll, I'll have a whole bunch of haters come on over. Good, good, check it out. Take a look at it. I, I want people to know the truth. Uh, Satan will use who and what he can. God uses it all, including Satan. That's just how it works. Back um, 35 years ago, when I was burying underground um, uh, cable for um, television, we didn't have little cats like those. Little backhoes, mini backhoes. That's nice. I did that in Corpus Christi, Texas. It was a, a high concentration of clay. There's different compositions of soil. Some where there's a lot of aggregate, like uh, rock and gravel, and then, uh, then there's clay and sand, and all of that um, has a lot to do with how things, how the, how the ground is, how stable it is. So like right here, these guys are, are doing site work set up. And uh, yeah, I'll show it to you. Uh, up in the view here, we've got a log truck coming in, a lumber truck. Um, this is the, the lumber before it gets processed. Kind of interesting, it, it runs full circle. These are, these are the trees that uh, came out of this area, I'm sure. I'm sure he's not just driving around with a load of trees uh, from somewhere else. They came from here. And that's a, a mulch company. So once again, uh, the water retention ponds. These views here of those trees in that water will not be seen later on when it's got houses loaded up. We'll see the reflections of the houses. That's how that is. So in showing the public works projects, like um, a development like this, I'm looking at a bunch of uh, stormwater uh, pipes up ahead. They're the large diameter. They, you know, we've got the drains on the low spots uh, on the side of the road, right there where these, um, they're, they're blocked off right now. They've got um, like uh, tube, sand tubes there to stop them from filling up with mud. And here's, uh, here's the, the site area. Um, we've got a, a lot of concrete uh, pipe and then a lot of equipment that run around in here. Huge pipe. I could walk in some of it. That's how big it is. I'd be happy to see um, people move here, come and live here. This is a, a gorgeous place to live. And they keep working on, on in. So the, they put the real pretty stuff up front, the, the part that's um, more readily visible uh, to people driving by more attractive and then they'll just keep working their way on in It's Probably billions of dollars worth of development to buy it and to put it all in 1200 homes just do the math it, homes are, are probably um, over 300,000 So I'm not, uh, I'm not exaggerating. Now that in the middle of the view, that's a, that's a high hoe. 
they call them. A high hoe is uh, not for, well, it, it's for the, the retention ponds. That's what they'll, they'll use that for. And then a, an articulated uh, cat loader right there. That's like the one that, um, it's a little smaller than the one carrying the drill pipe at the beach, but close to it. They'll, they'll lay the, um, the sewer system, the roadways, and all of that has to happen after the site work is done. Look at the mountain of uh, soil. There, let's uh, flip that around and zoom out. You can see the silhouette of it. That's a lot of earth. And what they'll do is they'll, um, they'll cut that on out of the um, water retention ponds. Um, that's A.O. Hardy there. They did, um, they did a lot of the uh, road projects around here. Like uh, Highway 31, I believe it was. Now, the, uh, this is a water truck right here, but behind it is a vacuum truck that'll clear um, the, it's a, a vac door, they call it. That'll pull the, the sludge out of the sewer system. I had a video the other night showing um, a recuperative vac system. They blow air down and, and then vacuum it up and it's, uh, it's a recycling air system for cleaning, vacuuming up parking lots and that. And we can see, like here's the, uh, here's the cul-de-sac and it looks like the development is ending here. That's the design of it. So this will be um, a real picturesque location for one of the nicest homes probably back here. It's kind of the way they do it. And I remember, you know, just hearing, yeah, there's a lot of weirdos in the cul-de-sacs. Well, they're, they're typically people that like a little bit more privacy don't mind taking the drive to to get further on in. It's all good. I would be one of the people that likes a cul-de-sac, but I also like living on the main drag coming in our neighborhood so I can wave at the people coming on in and they can they can see the the truth mobile. So if I if I had it sitting in the driving driveway this morning, all the people you see nodding, waving, or, or not, maybe you don't see it, I do. I'm waving at them. Uh, just look at the, the beautiful oak tree that, I don't know how well you can see that, but that is a classic gnarly oak tree. Isn't that beautiful? Once again, here's the, uh, here's the cul-de-sac. And it's a beautiful area. And then the high spot, the high spots are going to be the dry spots. That's the way it works. We, um, right here, this is the uh, in between the houses. I can tell because of the grading of it. There's a crown in the middle. That's a massive lot. That's a big, that's a house, that's a lot for a mansion right there. They'll probably have several of them here. These lots may be like a half acre each. I don't know. I'll bring you on in later on. Now, these houses in the view over there, uh, they're like, they look like maybe 30 years old, 20, 30, maybe 40 years old, fixed up. They're not like um, all uh, the same development, like a, um, 
a developer coming in and you've got this or that model. They're kind of like custom homes, but that's, we've developed into a, a, a way of developing the infrastructure with uh, planned communities and that, that are different than they used to be. It's nice that they left the mature oak trees in here like this. So this is the uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina area. I believe that I'm in Little River now. Where we live is in Longs. Um, 29568 is my zip code where we live. It's about as close to the... Uh, it's about as close to the ocean as Longs gets. Longs is huge, and they've got um, much more rustic areas um, further on in the country. So I, I've been fascinated with equipment my whole life. So I'm gonna I'm gonna drive us on uh, past where a lot of the equipment is. Uh, we don't have basements here, so these are um, uh, for the sewer projects and the um, all the grading that digs holes and allows the water to fill those up instead of the living rooms. So we're looking at uh, probably a million dollars worth of uh, equipment right there easily. Oh my gosh, yeah, the bulldozer itself is a uh, half is six hundred thousand. Yeah, it's a couple million dollars worth right there. And then we've got the big hole in the ground that they dug, so that the water will go there instead of people's living room. It's just the way it is. There's a lot of liability for um, a contractor that does site work. Man, if that place floods later on, there will be lawsuits against them. Now, I, I did do another broadcast in this area when it was a nice sunny day. I've got over 1,100 videos on my YouTube channel. I found that I can, um, oh, I think it was maybe a year and a half ago How when I got a new computer. I got a new computer that allowed me to download my videos and upload them to YouTube. I converted uh, Facebook videos to YouTube videos. So just to just to be clear, in the in the view right there, in the middle of the view, I just want to highlight the reality of this. Is that water is a plain mirror. That's what you're looking at. It's nothing magical. It's just reality. Now, until I started doing this, I don't know of anybody that was doing this. It's not like I'm looking for an award or anything on this what i'm what i'm wanting to help people to realize is reality exposes the global line the fact that the earth isn't moving and i'm going to show you uh, one of the common things that i've illustrated with my uh, water jug now it'll be opposite because it's in reverse mode but i'll put it right there so you can see the truth of that and then this um, let me um, let me show you that water will get perfectly still and it'll be perfectly level but I'll, I'll flip it around like this and you can see that it'll just do that and then um, it's liquid oxygen and hydrogen it's really refreshing and that's a big deal it's a really big deal to have proper nourishment. So on the construction site, 
Um, these gentlemen in the view coming up are, are carrying shovels and, and using wheelbarrows. And they may do that their whole career. I don't know. Uh, the gentleman standing over by some really nice four-wheel drives in that, they're operating heavy equipment. A heavy equipment operator it can easily make anywhere from uh, $12 an hour to $50 an hour. It depends on what they're doing. A crane operator that's moving um, heavy, heavy equipment uh, with precision on top of commercial buildings, they make a lot of money. And they need to be clean, clean and sober. You don't want a, a drugged heavy equipment operator. Okay, so I'm gonna take us into an area. I don't believe I, I came down this way before. It's a little bit more completed. And then we're looking at different stages of, of construction. I've done house framing, uh, remodeling, a lot of different uh, career paths I've been on. And then uh, bought and sold houses, fixed them up. That was the biggest money I ever made, was uh, fix, buying, buying well, uh, and, and selling, uh, buying a very desirable property fixing it up and selling it. And and by and large, the pretty people have the nicer stuff. It's just the way our, typically, the way our economy operates. You're not gonna see Horseface Harry be a news anchor man. It's just not gonna happen. And you're not gonna see me be an anchor man. They don't want me out there. I'm I'm fortunate to get to do what I what I get to do. I'm a, an independent uh, research journalist. I I don't uh, I'm not afraid to live, die, or tell the truth. I'm a dangerous man to the deception that's being perpetrated on humanity. Somebody's got to do it. You know I I wasn't the first person into flat Earth. That we. Adam and Eve were the first flat earthers. They, they walked in the garden with God. At least those are the first two that show up in the book of Genesis. I don't know if there were other civilizations earlier. I don't know. I know what scripture says. And, you know, I'm a biblical creationist. I'll go with that. It takes less than a day, 19 hours to hear the entire New Testament, or at least what we're presented from Matthew to Revelation. And then we've got from Genesis to, uh, to, to Matthew, which is the Old Testament, you know. Uh, Mal you know, so the, the way that this works out, we've got books of the Bible that aren't uh, included are they are they um, real reliable authored by God like the book of Enoch could be I don't know now just the simple example whether you whether you're walking to an internet cafe in India with on a muddy road the puddles are still gonna do that they're still gonna fill the low spot and then um, when I go to California and I go through Vegas I'll probably uh, be showing some water fountains. There we've got a big hole in the ground. And they make it nice and pretty and, and will uh, make the, you know, the grass is going to hold the, the earth together there. They don't want it to all cave in. But see, like right in the view there, we can see how flat it is, the reflection of the trees. That's what it'll do. So it illustrates when I when I take an urban display like this and a little bit of time to talk about it, there there the clues are all around. Uh, flat Earth clues. We've got texture. Um, 
Mount Everest is texture, five and a half miles tall, apparently, above sea level. What Do we have other areas in the world taller than that? Could be, I don't know. Now we're looking at a lot of the, the site work and, and a whole different kind of equipment. They don't use these for landscaping the yard. This is the kind of equipment that gets used to, um, uh, to give us the, the rough, uh, to take the rugged soil and move it around. Um, there we've got uh, chippers that came in and, and chipped up a lot of the trees. And then there are fires continually going in here too. Uh, the logging companies are are in back here. I won't be able to show you, I'm not gonna be able to drive in there, but I can zoom in there. Uh, because of the fog, we can't see a lot of those uh, pieces of equipment. I've seen uh, equipment called a hydro ax. It would uh, snip a tree with hydraulics and blades and, and take a, a hundred foot tree and move it. Cut it, lay it down. Um, there's, I've got liked videos of that. The biggest gnarliest equipment in the world. Uh, the biggest ship in the world. I believe it's 10 times the size of the Titanic. They built it in 35 weeks. How about that? I forget what the name of it is. It's it's one of my almost 1,800 now liked videos. The thing that the the diffused lighting and the fog does is it uh, allows us to see the contrast of the um, of the trees in the simple puddles like that. Now this is Bay Tree, um, and I have uh, a friend who used to live here. I'll just let them go. I want to take a, a more scenic tour of this. So even in an older development like this, we can see the, the marsh grass and the, and the low spots there. Now this area here uh, had a lot of rain fill up. In our neighborhood where we live, uh, we, uh, it was a week after Hurricane Florence came in and I did a Weather Wars video. I was out in the surf talking about it and I didn't realize that about a week later, we were gonna get a knock on the door that by the emergency rescue people, it was like 10 o'clock at night, they said by four o'clock in the morning, there's gonna be five feet of water in your living room. Hello, I wasn't ready for that. Who would be? Who would be ready for that? So that's part of the the dynamic that we're looking at with um, with what can happen with flooding. I'm going to take us for a little just a turn around to the through the Judd Coon parking lot. He's uh, the local Chevy dealer, and they they sell a lot of really nice vehicles here. Not just Chevrolet, but a lot of nice trucks and all of that. Corvettes, the, the showroom is really nice.
so they um, continue to develop this area. It's a very, very nice, clean area. A lot to do. It's uh, the Gulf capital of the world, Myrtle Beach, from what I hear. And in the previous summer of 2018, we had an estimated 20 million guests in this area. And then there's a lot of planned communities. Uh, River Park is over to the left. Uh, where we live is the Lakes at Plantation Pines. Uh, they're developing in there also. So yesterday I did the uh, video from right here, and I, I'll take the camera down. I, I wanted to show you, that's where I drove up, and then there's the water retention pond right there for the public works, or I should say the uh, road project. You can see the how the water is all flat. And that's sad. That's just, um, I never, I don't get sick of uh, showing it, talking about it. it. It, what it means is that NASA is lying. We're not uh, moving in four different directions at over a million miles an hour, spinning over a thousand miles an hour. It's all ridiculous. None of the movement of the earth has ever been uh, proven. It hasn't been proven because it, it doesn't move. That's all. So there's a, a lot of the trades that um, have work here, uh, the building of the homes, the plumbing, the uh, infrastructure, all of that. It's, um, it's actually a, a growing economy. That's part of what happens is um, a lot of people up the eastern uh, seaboard come down here and uh, people that don't like how, how vulnerable Florida is to hurricanes move up this way. So there's a, a converging of populations. Now in the, in the middle of the view, right about now, you're gonna see logging equipment right there. And then support trucks that, that go with that. That sign right there is probably $100,000. The, uh, the infrastructure to have a place look as nice as this is quite a bit. Imagine what it would be like without electricity. That's a big deal. So the Waccamaw River is um, about two miles down, uh, closer to uh, two and a half miles down the road there. Up the road, inland, a little ways. Ooh, yeah, I'm not gonna run that. Uh, some more, this right here is a, a chipping machine. It's a, a grinder. It'll grind up trees and turn them into mulch. That's a plane wrapper police 
uh, car that had all kinds of uh, short antennas on it. They can drive through a parking lot and pick up all kinds of data. I, I met one of the young ladies that operated a, a sweeper. I, I, took, I took some video and some photos, talked to her. She was working with uh, uh, human trafficking and, and that, going through the parking lot, scanning all the vehicles. If you're a wanted person, this is not a good place to hide out at all. Because they're, they're really good at uh, finding people. And that's good. It keeps the riffraff out. Now, because of the time of the day, uh, the fountain isn't running yet. So we'll see the really flat water and reflections right there. Uh, that's uh, neighbors that have uh, Blue Water Construction Company. And right here, uh, the water was coming up in the drains from the Waccamaw River. Coming right up in our backyard as well. There's a, a, a contour in these developments. That's how they design them. This right here is the phase one of our development. Um, it's uh, it's a, a different uh, phase. There was a, a little bit different building code. Uh, they allowed um, modular homes. Still a very nice neighborhood. And then uh, part of the system is to have the uh, water, uh, the low spot, so that we don't get flooded out. So thank you so much for uh, the likes, the shares. Um, I think um, I'm going to go just a, a little bit longer with this. I'm going to drive us on, on in. So when I, um, I've got the, um, the camera that I'm using again as my mounting for this. Let's see if I can show it to you a little bit better. 
Uh, but once again, just the, the simplicity that we don't have uh, any wind chimes hanging upside down in relationship to other wind chimes. We've got the, the water cycle of the world that um, allows for condensation, uh, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. And then uh, I'll just take us right around in our, our backyard. The, the low spot in the lot is between the houses. It's all very standard. And when we had um, the Hurricane Florence uh, rain overflow the banks of the Waccamaw River, we had um, water that was probably about five feet higher right here. It came up to right about here. I had uh, Walter the rescue turtle that I brought in. He was going to drown in a drain because he was trapped. There was no way he could get out. So one of the things that I, I just wanted to show, it's not raining, but the, um, the fog is accumulating on the uh, needles of the pine trees and just dripping off. Now, I mentioned um, earlier in the broadcast, I could smell some, like, uh, motor oil, automatic transmission fluid. There's the evidence of it right there. That can happen. When we, um, uh, there, there's a lot of, um, well, mechanics. People work on their own stuff. Some people maybe aren't as diligent about putting the, putting the, uh, the fluids where they're supposed to. But that happens. Um, we should recycle that when we can. But anyway, this is Robert Forsh. Thanks so much for your public and private encouragement. I'm going to take us on over for a, a finishing shot. Here's the, um, the little water pond I have outside my window. And the, the sun will bounce off of that and off of the mirrors inside the house. It, it's kind of pretty. I like it. We've got another big pond over there. And the site work they did here was good. The problem that we had was the sewer water system or the storm water system was delivering the river to our neighborhood here. That's what, what ended up happening. So thanks so much for your public and private encouragement for liking and sharing, and by all means, please hashtag YouTube truth if you like.